Welcome to the podcast. This will be a fun one, but yeah. uh, let me phase the music out. Like this is, this is one of those. This is one of the fun shows where you know we just we just say fuck it and you know we're walking the plank of technical issues and yeah you know, hope, yeah hope hoping that we don't plunge into the goddamn ocean here. No, we're going to. It, that's a it's it's gonna happen, but you know you you hope that. Maybe the people, you know, poking behind you will change their minds and let you back on the ship. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just about every technical issue that I could have this afternoon. It's like, okay, we'll throw them all at you. <laughs> yeah, and, and how fucking appropriate when we actually have shit that we played and can yeah. talk about. I mean, I can't promise any of mine is interesting, but I've, I've got notes. And, you know, that's like a 50-50 thing each week, whether or not yeah, I... I yeah, I, yeah, I, I played a couple things, and I liked one of the things, and I hated the other one. So <laughs> that'll be. I've only be seen. Good I've only seen you talk about one, and I know which one that that is. You seem to like it, unless your your opinions drastically changed since the <laughs> since I went to sleep, yeah. and then like woke up and I was like, maybe no, fuck that game. You had a nightmare about it, and you can't differentiate between like the actual game and what you dreamed. And you're yeah, like, man, everything's, everything's pixel art right now. <laughs> um. So yeah. uh, let's just jump in. We probably keep the show short this week anyway because of all the issues, but uh, yeah. and starting late. So I guess we should jump right into the games. Do um, sure. you want to lead it off? Yeah, um, it's not near <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> what I what I should have been playing for like the last <laughs> month. I I have not. Really that was kind of like your last big like. You're like, yeah, I don't have a lot of money coming in. You know, a huge yeah pool of funds, last... but I'll. I'll go ahead and like Nier's going to be the one. And then it's like, now I have it. And you spend a week getting it to run. And then you're like, I'm done. Yeah. I mean, you know, it shit happened, you know, <laughs> um, I forgot like just how much stuff there still was to play outside of Nier. Um, it, but anyway, you know, I, uh, I remember I was reminded that Shovel Knight was getting new DLC, which came out yesterday. Um, Shovel Knight, Spectre of Torment, and if you already have Shovel Knight, you can you can play it. I think it came out like a week or two ago for the Switch, um, sort of like a hey, buy this for the new console sort of deal they were doing. But um, now it's out for everything, and uh, I loved Shovel Knight, and so to kind of get ready for the new DLC, I realized I never played the first one, the Plague of Shadows, where you play as Plague Knight. Oh yeah, I kind of um, forgot that even existed. Good, it's terrible. Um, <laughs> like yeah. I, I love Shovel Knight. I, I gave it a ten. Uh, it's the only game I think we've ever reviewed twice on the site. Uh, Derek also gave it a ten when he originally reviewed it. Uh, I think I think that game's incredible. It just feels awesome, uh, and the, like there's a sense of. There's a sense of progression to it that like fits that style of game, but it's not just like, oh, we put RPG elements in it instead. Like they kept it very true to like platforming. Yeah, like it had um, some cool um, twists with like the save point globe things that you could. Yeah, and but you could break for rewards, but then you lose that checkpoint. Um, and and it made like exploring and go finding all the secret rooms of a level like it was valuable because you'd find money you'd find upgrades and like you know, like all that stuff like was it was fun to get around and it was rewarding to do so yeah um and even the the only thing that i didn't love but it wasn't because i'd put it up there probably a 10 to i like it it's great i hate that old school like press down to pogo jump attack like that's tails cool. mechanic but it, that's probably one of the few games that I played it that it didn't completely like piss me off. But this, but this felt way better than DuckTales. Right. Um, and I, I guess that keep that in mind. I don't like DuckTales. Um, but I, but the feel of this game is very good. Like the Pogo stuff is really natural, and Shovel Knight is um, like he like the way he plays. I, I thought was perfect. Because he's bouncing off enemies, and you get these abilities that let you dash in the middle of the air and stuff. So you always feel like this really tight sense of control. Plague Knight is the problem with Plague Knight is uh, they didn't really redesign the campaign for him. They just kind of made him a playable character. He has his own story, 
but the levels are the same. Uh, you know, there might be some minor changes, but they felt pretty much the same. Um, and he, and he just plays awful. Uh, and he like, he, he's very slow, which is annoying. Um, and to kind of make up for the fact that he can't pogo off enemies, they gave him kind of like a air launch sort of thing. And in order to do the air launch, so you have a double jump, but to do like the explosion sort of air dash thing, uh, you hold the attack button down, which is really fucking awkward when you're trying to do these sequences where you have to manage your jumps and do a dash. So it's like instead of like it naturally being a part of like timing your timing your jumps, it's this weird like hit the button where you throw the bomb but hold it down. So then you jump while you're holding that button down, let go of the button, and then hit the jump button again to do your second uh, to do your double jump. And it's just like I've played really hard platformers, you know, but they've all felt really tight. And there was that you like. I can get through this because I understand the mechanics of it and it makes sense. Like there was a real point where I was like, I'm not going to be able to beat this DLC because I just can't do the combination of button presses. This fucking thing wants me to do because that charge up mechanic is so awkward and takes such a long time. Um, and then, then like, you know, to fight with him, like he has all these upgrades and stuff and how he throws his bombs and like, there's a lot of shit to it. Like what, you like you have to go to the pause menu every time to decide like what arc are you throwing the bomb or is it a bomb that wraps around you and spins around you and does it blow up immediately or does it have like a charge or does it you know blow up when there's an enemy near it and it's like and you have to go to the menu to change all of that stuff like there's no quick uh select of these things like there's no mega man trigger thing to like you know, set up like you know, like, yeah, like you, a you weapon wheel or something. A like. weapon wheel or like loadouts, like change how you, like your loadouts. Because by the end of the game, I was doing two loadouts. Where it was like, here's how I set it up for the level. But then when I fought a boss, I like I found a way that just always worked. Um, and it was a really boring way where you just send all the like bombs around you spinning in a circle, and then you just run into them. Um, and then just kind of like, what I would do though. I mean, the terrorists figured out that's about the best way to, to use bombs. Yeah, sure. Suicide bombing right. is a really great strategy if you have health <laughs> potions. Um, but it, it's, it's really bad. Like I re- like it was kind of, it was a little stunning and it made me really nervous for the next DLC because Shovel Knight played so well and it's like, oh man, like they did that. They really fucked this up. Like, it is, this really doesn't feel good at all. And so uh, I got, like, three stages into Spectre, Spectre of Torment. And that, I can say that's a, this is a lot better. Um, it's, a, it's more what I wanted from a Shovel Knight campaign where it's like, hey, you're going to play as this different character. Like, they make the, they redesigned the, like... It's the same bosses, and they use the same assets and stuff, but the stages are completely re- completely redesigned towards this character. And it, he, instead of, like, bouncing off of enemies um, or double jumping, like, his thing is he runs up walls and he can slash enemies through the air. That gives him kind of a dash. Um, so it's a lot more... Like, it feels a lot more natural because you're not just shoving this character into the Shovel Knight stages and being like, well try to make it work yeah um you know so it's they're able to make these stages that make the uh platforming with specter and i feel a lot tighter and um I, i'm really enjoying it and then they're you know they're kind of they're doing what i think they should do which is like you know this is just dlc campaign so just you know you don't have to do the whole map again you don't have to fill it up with towns and stuff like shovel knight does like the the way this uh campaign works is like you just kind of have your starting hub and then you warp to you know whatever level you want and you can buy stuff and get upgrades and all that stuff but that's all in your starting hub like there's no towns or extra shit like they save that for the main game and i kind of like the simplicity of it like it feels more like what this type of game should be which is um it's less about the exploration part and more about the um, challenge of like this really tight wall running air dashing platforming. So 
Some of you have Shovel Knight. I, I really think, I like, skip the Plague Knight shit. It's not fun. Um, like, this is a lot better. <laughs> so just, just play that. Like, the, the Plague Knight thing also, uh, one thing I forgot to mention is, like, they they added a green these green coins that you use to get upgrades, um, and there are thirty in every level. Jeez, which is already like that's a, that's too much. Um, you, like I love collectathons and stuff, but that's too much for a side scrolling platformer because it guarantees you will always miss at like at least one by the time you finish the stage. Like I did it on every single one. I missed like one fucking coin. Um, and you like, there's no way to like go back to the level and just collect the coin and get out. Like you can't, you you can't early exit a level and save your stuff. So you have to finish the level with all the coins. It's which would be bad enough, but it makes it extra bad when you say a control. So, but like bad and frustrating, it's, it's not like, Oh, simply rerun the level. It's yeah, like, it's just, it's not fun to play. It, like, that's the thing. Like, Shovel Knight, it's the same mechanic as the Shovel Knight stuff, but Shovel Knight was really fun to play, so I didn't mind going back and doing extra shit. Um, I was thinking about that. That's the problem that you run with that. I, I, there, I saw a headline today about Prey, um, and something about, like, the developer saying, oh, there's so, uh, you know, I, apparently, like, the superpowers you get we talked about that are kind of like the bioshocky like whatever plasmids right but they're called they're alien powers and they're like oh and you can't possibly get all the alien powers in a single playthrough and i'm like and i know a lot of people look at that they're like awesome and i'm like ugh. do they now though like that feels like something we would be like oh awesome like you have to think about what you upgrade but that seems like a mentality from like five years ago. Right. Uh, because it's like, like, oh, it's replayability. It's like, yeah, but you're replaying the same thing again just to get some other perks that may or may yeah. not be worth it. Like that's that's my what I was getting at. It's, yeah, it's like, did you learn nothing from Doom? <laughs> just give me everything. <laughs> By the end of the game, I want everything. Right. And you know, and I want to be able to use it on giant aliens. But we we cause this on ourselves, not us, me and you individually, of course. Uh, we cause a lot of terrible things, but not this. But just as gamers yeah. with this whole, like, this game's only 20 hours. This one's only 40. This one's only 120. Every game should be 800 hours of gameplay. So now yeah. that's what these developers do. They're like, let's well, automatically build it in so that, I mean, we don't necessarily want to make our story take that long, but we'll make it so in order to get everything, you have to play the 20-hour story eight times. And it's like, that's not yeah. compelling. Yeah, um, like I was, I mentioned Doom. I would say Doom is way more replayable than any of those other games where it's like, oh, we're gonna cut content off from you because like we just didn't feel like we needed to give you a motivation to replay it. It's like I would rather just play a game that just like was fun and gave me like that gave me the tools at least to get everything. Right. Um, now, in fairness, too, I didn't read the article. I'm not, I'm not making this about Prey because I don't know how it's going to specifically work. And if it's more like a RPG, like I'll bring up Witcher just because me and you were talking about it yesterday. But uh, you can't get every, you know, it's like you said, you have to kind of think, how's my play style? I'm going to kind of spec that way. And that doesn't bother me as much. But yeah, something my point But even is, like Skyrim, you could theoretically get everything like upgraded like you could yeah. like even though you could go a specific way like you, you had the ability i love how skyrim did it where you level up your your talents by using them so like sure yeah I, but but, uh, uh, but that's the thing like you know just you, if you want like i think it's weird that like developers would design games with all these abilities, but give you like no motivation to use. Cause you're going to just find that one strategy that works and you're going to stick with it. Cause more than experimenting, we want to just be like, we want to beat a challenge mm-hmm. as players. So like if we find a solution, we're going to keep repeating that solution until you give us a reason to change our tactics. What made doom great was that you can never rely on one gun. No, like you, you it, had to constantly cycle through them because you didn't get like your ammo was just one sort of stock supply. You know, you didn't get to. And that's know, what just, I loved is like it because when I, 
I don't love the whole like um, I'm trying to think like Alien Isolation, although that one is a bad example because a Dead Space that's a better example where they're like, oh, well, you'll have all these guns, but ammo is scarce. And it's like Doom had that cool like ammo is scarce for a specific gun, but there's ammo all over the fucking place. Sure. Like, there, yeah, it's like, oh, you're out of ammo yeah, for your like, shotgun. Poor baby. Like, you have eight other guns. Right. And it, so that was really cool. But it forced you to learn the other guns and the other play styles and when to conserve certain ammo, when not to. And, and when to use that goddamn chainsaw. Like, it wasn't just <laughs> there for, like, a glory kill, goddamn right. kill thing. It, it was to actually, like, oh, this actually brings me. This gives me ammo and gives me resources. I have to use it wisely. And what was so amazing about it is the way that they did that added that really cool level of like strategy without starving you for ammo, but with also without ever slowing the act. I mean, it was always just like, you're going to have to think about this, but you better fucking think about it like right now. Cause yeah, it's like that, you know, and it, it, Doom was an incredible game, but, you know, and I, and I understand, like, if a game's more on the Bioshock side of shooters, like, you're going for something that, like, you can't, you can't really get, you can't really do a Doom. No, and not every thing. shooter could be Doom because you get sick right. of that. Like, one of the reasons sure. it was so great is because it was different than everything else. But But there is something to be just said about, like, you know, developing your game so that, your player like f- not only feels the need to, but wants to experiment well, with his options. Right. Yeah. And like wants to read, but that's kind of to loop this all back around to shovel night. What we were talking about, like it's, it's one thing to put uh, things in your levels that make you have to go back. You know, maybe you couldn't get them all in one run, but then you better damn well be sure that it's fun to go back and replay it. Otherwise yeah. it's just, uh, yeah, yeah, didn't they? it was it was not fun. And this like this uh, Specter Knight stuff, they add coins to it, but there are only ten a level, and it's like they're not like like some of them were just so uh, like one t- you have like one chance to get them, or you have to die and go back to an earlier checkpoint to get them. These it feels like if once you once you found them, you can you, you have enough of a shot to like you have a fair shake at getting them. And it's and you want to because the power ups you have for this character are a lot more useful and a lot more natural to use because you don't have to scroll through three different item lists to decide like how what exactly your attack's gonna be. Congratulations, you've unlocked the thirty seven degree arc. Oh the twenty two degree arc. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want a lob or do you want a lob where it lobs but then it hits the ground actually? Like <laughs> it's there. It was just a. I I really don't know what they were thinking, and I remember not many people talked about the Plague Knight stuff. No, like um, it got a lot of good buzz because it's it's free, right? Aren't both the DLCs yeah. free? Yeah. So that's cool, and it got some buzz for that. It's like, oh, this awesome developer that made this great game is giving you free content, and then it comes out, and it's like, you can usually tell when it's one of those things where they like the game, the original game, and the developer, because instead of panning it, they just kind of like, okay, we'll f- we'll forget about it. Um, yeah, somebody it's, mentioned, and, and I agree with this, the same kind of phenomenon right now with ukulele, um, which is one of the things on my, my list here where it's like, everybody was so looking forward to it and some people really liked it, but it's like, it comes out and instead of like really panning it, I know a couple people did, but it's like, oh, well, yeah, it's out. And, uh, so what day is it again? Oh yeah. There's, there's that TV show on tomorrow. Like we'll just like yeah. not talk about it. <laughs> Yeah, like, ukulele is kind of a weird one. And really, like, Kickstarter video games are in a weird spot where it's like, I would argue probably Shovel Knight is the best uh, game to come out of that oh, format. Uh, um, I don't know. That would be a really interesting discussion because you got things like Divinity Original Sin. That was a Kickstarter project, and that's one of the yeah, best. No, there are there are good ones. I, Wasn't uh, Pillars, uh, Pillars yeah, of Eternity so. one? I, yeah. I haven't played like, that I'm one not, yet. I'm not but... saying that as like a declaration. I'm just saying like in terms of... It's an example of how to do it right. Or, yeah, and or like it, there's it a lot right. of other big yeah. name ones that just like they always seem to... Like in some ways, ukulele kind of like that's one of the best ways it could probably have gone for them because you don't want to be a mighty number no. nine and you don't want to be, uh, you know, like the fucking double fine adventure broken age. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, some people say, yeah, you do, because they got a fucking buttload of money for that. But 
just in terms of like that release and like how it kind of just panned out and like but like some people are like all right new fucking adventure game other people are like this is kind of shit um you know it turns out i didn't like these as much <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i think that's a lot of it too like all the criticism that i have and they're a lot but it's like if if i went back and played banjo kazooie i'd probably be complaining about the same thing so but you would sound ridiculous because that was an N64 game. <laughs> True. So you would sound like me when I talk about Mario 64. It's like, how could it control so awful? Because they didn't fucking know what they were doing yet. Right. Um, but, uh, so I don't know. Do you have more on, on uh, no, that was Shubbly it. Night? Uh, I'm going to keep, you know, putting time into it. Uh, but yeah, it seems really great. And if you're, if for some reason you don't have enough to play this year, that is that is free with Shovel Knight. I think they're releasing all these. Uh, like right now, if you have Shovel Knight, I think they renamed it. Like they, it was weird. I updated it yesterday, and they like changed the name to like Shovel Knight Treasure Trove. Um. So now, like they do, they really see them all as like separate games, and they're having uh, one more DLC coming out uh, in the future with uh, King Knight. Um. But yeah, See, so the, like they're trying to sell the like I think they are going to sell the games separate if you want them that way, or you can just get like the whole Shovel Knight. That's my big complaint, probably my only complaint, especially since I haven't played the DLC. Is that you know if it was me and you have Shovel Knight and you're going to come out with a DLC that's a different character, you'd have to have like I don't know peasant ho or ho peasant or like spade gardener. Like you got to stick with the theme. I guess they are sticking with the. I, I don't know what you. I don't know what you mean. It should all be a character from the medieval, so like a peasant or a jester. Mm-hmm. But that's why. And then the, they should have a garden implement, like. The, the theme is that people don't take him seriously as a hero because he's a knight a with shovel a shovel, knight. right? Instead of it, and without realizing that shovels fucking hurt. I know that's um, a shovel's a pretty damn good weapon if you. Like if no you're like, in the garage and somebody's going to come attack you, I'd grab a shovel before I'd grab like a handsaw. Like the handsaw's got the teeth, but I would take the handsaw probably. It's quicker. Um, well, after playing Bloodborne so much, I think I'd probably try to quickly tie the handsaw to the shovel yeah, handle. And be like, ha, ha, saw blade, right. bitch. But uh, yeah, yeah, totally. But yeah. yeah, that's all for me. Um, Bloodborne. I've been playing that. Um, got to Rom. Good. I I can I I can say it that it's Rom the vacuous spider, but I can never spell it. So I've cha- decided his name is Rom the dickish spider you because it's a dickish boss fight. You got him. Uh-huh. You showed him, man. Um, that's one of the. <laughs> it, it's uh, that one I did summon help for because there was the summon right outside the the door. Uh, and I, I don't even know. I think it's a character that I haven't actually like run into the NPC yet, but he's a caster. And he, like, helps nominally. Um, for the first phase of that fight, he kind of helps split the focus on the spiders, which aren't... In the, during the first phase, the little spiders aren't that big of a... Like, they can one-shot you, but they're also kind of slow, and you can pick them off one at a time. And Rom himself, or herself, whichever, isn't attacking you during that phase. So, mm-hmm. I mean, they're not a huge deal. You just take your time and pick them off until they're all dead, then attack Rom. And then once Rom teleports and starts attacking you then the spiders became a thing that like i would just kind of ignore like i try to draw them away from rama a little bit then run in and do you know a yeah hit and run which is basically 99 percent of the time if you can't figure out a uh, foe in dark souls it's hit and run or dark souls so uh, yeah Bloodborne. like anytime i went after the little spiders it was just whenever they got close and mm-hmm. i like i had the uh i think i had the Lud- ludwig greatsword by then and the arc on the like heavy sword is uh, like pretty wide. So you could take out like three spiders in one well, hit, but they can't be facing you because their heads are armored and that barely they can't you- be facing you, but I was never locked on. So yeah. I always had an angle yeah. to their back. So. But, uh, well, and that's one thing I did when I was having problems with the fight. Cause I just, I could not, I would get close, but I think two things were my problem. My, um, uh, saw blade, which I've stuck with through the whole thing <laughs> is up to like plus seven now. And I would do so much damage to Rom that, like, because you can also attack Rom as he's teleporting or she, whatever, as it is teleporting. 
it would cause enough damage that it would do go straight from phase one to phase three. But what happens is it still does the second teleport in between, so it still spawns two groups of little spiders. Yeah. So it doesn't give you an opportunity to clear any of them out. So now you're on phase three with like double the spiders after you. Yeah. Um, so at one point I'm like, well, I can't figure this out, but I know everything in, in, uh, no, not in that area, I guess not. But I know that the Ludwig, um, Holy blade does extra damage to Rom, uh, because I think Rom's considered one of the like unholy, I forget what they call it, but the class of enemies that it does 50% more damage to. So I'm like, well, fuck, I'm going to have to farm souls to buy the thing and farm enough souls to... I had most of the the shards to upgrade it, but needed some souls for that. And by that point, too, I think I was out of vials. Um, so I had to do a bunch of farming. And then I got the Holy Blade, but it's still... I, f- I found that uh, bolt paper and my um, once saw you blade. Played, yeah, once you... Like, in that game, like there are advantages to certain weapons in certain fights, but really... It's more about play style and more about what you've put like your resources behind. Yeah. So like, and, and that's, and that boss is, he's like, he's kind of a pain in the ass. He or she, whatever. Um, but he, like, he, honestly, like once I did beat it, it felt like, well, that was probably one of the easier bosses. No, I've no, I don't know. It's, it's, it's one of the bosses where it's pretty clear what you need to do. But I th- th- the only problem with it is it's one of those bosses where between the little spiders, the diving attacks on the little spiders, if they hit you, will one shot you and you can't always see them coming because of the just the way the camera is. Um, and then some of the arcane attacks from ROM, once you get to phase two and more so on three, can also one shot you. So you really, really have to be dodging. Um, but- I, I, I think what made it easier for me is like once... Like, Rom's attacks aren't that hard to kind of, like, see the pattern in them. Um, like, the it re- so really the fight near the end just sort of became about crowd control with the rest of the spiders because you're not going to be able to kill them all. Like, you, the sp- they'll, they'll keep getting summoned. Um, so it's really just sort of, like, I did, like, kind of just, like you said, running in and out uh, to attack Rom itself. But then, like I was kind of kiting the crowd of spiders around, yeah. so they were, it was more like they were chasing me rather than like protecting Rom. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, which they do, and but it was funny because when I did finally beat Rom, it was one of those where I had gone in and it did one too many attacks, like you tend to do towards the end of a fight, because you see the like health bar getting low, and Rom had like enough health that you could couldn't really even see the health bar, but it was still alive. But I got hit by one of the like area of effect attacks that almost killed me too. So we're both basically on the brink of death, and I'm just like mm-hmm. fuck this. And I like ran in and hit him, and it killed him. But they're dicks in dark and dark souls. I'm gonna keep saying that in Bloodborne, where um, which is a Hemwick, and there's another one that are like anytime there's a boss that summons things, the things will go away when you kill the boss, but not right away. Right. Right. Yeah, it's, I was just about to say, like, I think the spiders did actually kill me after yeah, I killed Rom. Well, and what sucked is because I had had souls to begin with, and then when you kill Rom, you get, like, 30,000 uh, souls, uh, blood echoes or whatever. Yeah. And when I go went back there, I couldn't find them, and I'm running around looking for them, but when you get close enough to that woman, that's... Um, that cutscene cut triggers. Scene, yeah, it triggers. So I lost all those souls. And I think that's part of it. There was one other time where I lost because that at, at the point I'm at, I'm at like level fifty eight. So that's really only two, two levels. But there was another point or two where I've lost two or three levels worth of stuff. And I think I feel like I'm to a point in the game where I should be closer to level seventy, and I'm really at like level sixty. Um, Getting by on skill, man. Well, I was. Uh, that was the whole point of my notes here. Is now after ROM, I've hit a fucking wall. Everything there's like. Th- three different things I can do right now. Two of them are completely optional, but they're really cool. And <laughs> they're all like, I, I, I'll try them for an entire evening and not get anywhere and then be out of everything. So then the next time I play, I have to spend an hour farming bullets and blood vials. Yeah. Um, and that's just not fun. But um, that, that, I mean, that was one of the, you know, true knocks I had to give the game in my review was 
you know, you, you will hit a point where you have to grind those things back up and it's annoying. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I mean, there's a pretty good, like those big guys with the bricks drop them a lot. So yeah, I, I've been going to, to Hemwick Charnel Lane because they've got one of the guys with the bricks and then two of the executioners, which still fucking give me problems. But they drop like four vials and a bunch of so, uh, echoes. So yeah. I'll just, I, that's what I've been doing. And then now that I realize I'm out of bullets too, if I turn around from that lantern, you run back to that forest part where there's like 400 jerks with guns shooting at you. But at yeah. this point, they're low enough that it's easy and you can get like. 20 or 20 to 30 bullets per run. So, I mean, it's, it's only a couple runs and it builds it back up. Um, but I've gone to Canehurst castle and with the, um, Ludwig greatsword, that's the one where right outside sucks. Cause you got those flea things and they're a bitch. Uh, although as long as you make sure to only aggro one at a time, they're not that bad. They just, they hit hard if you mess up. Um, and then you get into the castle and that's where with all the weeping ladies and the ghosts, and it's really cool, but with that Ludwig greatsword, it does extra damage to them. Plus, you've got the poke. That's what I love that greatsword for is the poke. Because yeah, there's so great, many. It's a great lunge. Yeah, so many enemies in that game. It's easy enough to just stand just out of range and poke them. Um, it, the yeah. first time I got to Kanehurst Castle, I made it all the way through that level. And then stumbled into the Martyr Ligarius fight, which I, from what I've seen, a lot of people consider the hardest fight, boss fight in the game. Um, and then from what I watched about the boss fight, I really don't think it is. Uh, you, He hits like a fucking truck and you just have to know his patterns, but it seems like if you know what you're doing, it's not that bad. But he's one of those bosses that you're probably not going to beat the first time you stumble across him, and I certainly did not. Yeah, um, and that might be my best bet is to go back and try to beat him. And I, it, what floors me, Kanehurst and that storyline and that boss are all so cool. Mm-hmm. They're a hundred percent optional. Like it would be ex- yeah. extremely possible to get through that game and not even know how to get to that area. No, um, I, I loved this. I loved that whole section. I loved how mm-hmm. it started. I loved that fight. Um, it's, it's, a, I, I thought it was a pretty rough one. It's a, like, part of that is because like, he's so fast that yeah. like, I couldn't really, like, I couldn't use the great sword form of the Holy blade. It was like, you had to be quick, um, which meant you were doing significantly less damage per hit. It's, but it seems like a fight to me that the first, it's one of the, uh, outliers where the first phase seems harder than the other, or unless you miss that. I know you have to interrupt his spell when he casts a shield. Otherwise it becomes infinitely harder. Yeah. Um, but he becomes a very parryable. It looks like in the second and third phase. Um, now I say, yeah. it looks like I have yet to do it, <laughs> but uh, so yeah. that's, that's where I'm at there. And then, so I'm like, well, I'll try your goal. The unseen, or I think it's pronounced your goal or your goal, the unseen yeah. village. Um, where you first start to see all the great ones or whatever that maybe not yeah. the great ones, but the the big fuckers that fucking yeah, <laughs> big fuckers, big trucks. Yeah, we're talking about. Um, uh, and it's the area itself is kind of just annoying because it's got the tomb of the giants type thing where there's the bell ringing women that just summon infinite, but they summon way more people than yeah. the than the skeleton major or the whatever. Um, so, but, so basically it becomes one of those areas that you just run past everything for most of, yeah. um, but you, you got it. You, you're, you are as good at Bloodborne as I am now because <laughs> you learned the most important <laughs> lesson yes. run away, especially there. Like I don't mind fighting my way through stuff cause I feel like it gets me better, but there, there's, there's no point because by the time you kill stuff, there's three more of them coming after I mean, you. there's stuff there. But well, yeah, I, and I, that's what I do. I dance around. You gotta, you gotta weigh all the pros and cons, cons of <laughs> Hanging around and fighting. But um, um, I was going to say, though, on the subject of blood vial farming, like I remembered that I got kind of like once I realized how much of a pain in the ass that was, I started just making it part of the like level up routine where it was like anytime I was going to like level up, uh, I would I would do it. I would pay what I needed to to level up and then I would just you know, spend extra. the souls. Yeah. Yeah. And I, that's and a, that would be a, you save it in storage. And that would be so. a wonderful up to like um, 900, I think. I, you can save a bunch in storage. Um, and that would be if, if you've not played Bloodborne, but you're going to, that's a beginner tip that that's a great because it, it, in the beginning of the game, 
short of a couple points, they may do a good job of making it feel like it's not necessary to farm vials. I was never short vials in the early game. Uh, other than I think the blood starved beast, I far I had to go farm vials. Um, so well, the it, blood vials get more expensive as you do more in the game, too. So that's yeah, they're like, still that's not bad though. I think they're like six hundred. They're, they're, they're cheap, and that's why it's always just oh the difference. Even if I'm only buying like two, same with like bullets. that's two in my storage right. that I don't have to worry about. Um, um, and just uh, you'll you'll find like the more you kind of. Like, yeah, unless you're just bum-rushing the game and doing every, like, boss, like, you know, like, which it seems like you are. It seems like you're kind of cruising through the game a lot faster than I did. Then again, I was writing about it every day. But, uh, like, it's it adds up. Like, yeah. you know, oh, I'll go into this little village and then, like, just when I get out. And if I didn't have enough to level up, it's like, well, then fuck it. Like, I'm... I'm not under leveled for these areas, so I'll just put it all to well, blood files. I know, and it, and, it, and then this is kind of like the being in your 30s and looking back at your 20s when you have <laughs> when you're working like saving thing too. It's like if I thought right. about all the times where I was like, I don't have enough to level up, so I'll hold on to them, and then you lose them because you died and you couldn't get back. If I had mm-hmm. spent that on blood vials and bullets, I'd be fine now too. So that's a great tip if you're just starting the game. Um, but anyway, so the unseen village, I did get through to the first lantern, which is right before the part you enter like a chapel and there's the three hunters and they're f- yeah. fucking assholes. Like I, that fight's pissing me off. Um, yeah. That, that, like that is kind of when the great ones appear, that's when like kind of the line gets drawn and the hunters, like the hunter fights become really tough. Well, um, and the thing is all three of those hunters would be chumps on their own, but they're fast. And cause every hunter in the game is fat. Like they're yeah. basically you except with different weapons. Um, and I just can't, and everything that you read about, it, cause I've died enough to, I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to read about this. And it's like, Oh, separate them. I'm like, you fucking can't. If you manage to get one away from the group, as you're attacking the one, the other two dive on you. Like mm-hmm. other than getting lucky and having one or two get stuck on level geometry for a second, it's easier to say to separate them than it is to do. Um, so like you, you aggro one of them and you run far, far away until two of them turn around <laughs> and then you run up to the third but, one who's who should just be turning around and you poke him in the ass. Well, but the problem Repeat is you can't, it becomes a fair fight, which would be easier to do too. If all the other regular enemies didn't respawn in that area. So it's not like you can clear out a safe area and then aggro them and run to it because by then things have respawned. Yeah. I'm um, not sure if th- this is the same area or not. Um, but I was watching a body video, Bloodborne video, um, where, like, I th- I think it was a, like a church area with three hunters, and he pointed out that I, I think it might have been in the DLC actually, but one of the hunters you fight is uh, Amelia, who before she like goes all wolfy and shit, hmm. um, which I thought was pretty neat. Yeah, but. I didn't know that she was a hunter originally. You mean the the one that ends up being Vicar Amelia and turns into the yeah, like because the, and that's why I think it's a different one than the one you're talking about. Um, yeah, I know it because these three are yeah proper hunters, and that but makes sense like, yeah. for her to be in the old hunters DLC because this would have had to been her yeah. form before the current events. But yeah, yeah, but that that DLC is really fucking weird and interesting i know that was the other thing because i realized that i'm getting closer to the end of the game like the vanilla game and i'm like i haven't i don't think i've even been to any of the dlc stuff yet and i haven't um yeah but anyway so the three hunters have me kind of stuck and i know you can it's like anything else i could just run past them and continue on to the boss but Especially with the hunters, I get this retarded, like, they piss me off, and I'm like, I am not going to leave this area alone until I kill these jerks. Uh, which brings me to the third place I'm stuck, and that's the crow hunter that spawns in the um, Grand Cathedral as part of uh, Aline the Crow's quest line. Now, if you yeah. don't happen to advance her quest line, then it's her there, but... Yeah. Um, but the dude she's fighting in there, that's <sighs> probably the toughest one-on-one well, yeah, fight. without I've I've without figured out ways to cheese it, and even then, it's hard. I almost I got so mad. I, I, I <laughs> one of the things that's important against him is having numbing mist because he heals when he gets low. 
I think he can only do it once, but... If you say so. What's important for me is having a really fucking big sword, which keeps him away. Well, that's <laughs> what I, I switched to the two-hand um, holy blade and take excuse me and then kite him down to the stairs to, so we're at that boundary where you can get him to walk towards you and he's one one of his moves he'll just walk slowly towards you and then when he gets close enough he'll fuck you up but with that holy blades lunge attack it's easy yep. to time it so that he walks into a power attack and then mm -hmm. you have to just dodge around and let him keep unaggroing and keep doing it and then yeah yeah you have to be really cautious i cheesed it the exact same fucking way yeah. well Where, like here's what happened for me is i had him down to like 10 percent health but i was out of bullets so i couldn't once he started walking away i couldn't do that shoot him in the back to re-aggro him and whatever and so i got impatient i'm like he needs one or two more hits i'm gonna go in for it nope he parried well, you me. Can also and fucked throw me up. pebbles at him. I think I'm pretty much out of pebbles. I was out of. I'm out of pretty much everything at this point. Yeah, but yeah, but I mean, like if you can, like you are fast enough to like mm -hmm. trigger him and get back to where you need to be on the stairs. I died to him three times. I died Once to I him knew like how to times. cheat. <laughs> so oh yeah, like, yeah. Like, I died to him a lot more, but once I figured out that, like, you can kind of play with his aggro a little bit. Um, He's, he's like, yeah. it is, he's still a fucking asshole. But he's so um, cool, too. That's why I have to kill him. It's like one of those, I feel like one of those dicks that has to go to Africa and kill a lion just because a lion's such a, like, amazing, um, you know, predator. And, like, at this point, I'm is like. truly the greatest predator of all, eh, hey, Mr. Lion? <laughs> Which I joke about. I would never do that because I think that is retarded. Everybody's like, oh, man, look at this killer. And I went and killed him. I'm like, you're a human with a gun. I hope you yeah. can be a animal without no, one. No, put you in a fucking UFC cage with a lion. Bare right. knuckle. Maybe give you a knife fucking, since they have claws. And then, yeah. And then, then tell me how fucking, in, like. Show me your ingenuity it's, now. Especially since these people that do that and they're like, oh, I, I was able to hunt this deadly predator. I'm like, at a nature preserve where they literally have them fenced in. They drive you yeah, out to them. For, waiting for fucking white people to fly over and just fucking <laughs> right. shoot them. It's like, I, wow, I really, you're such yeah. a top dog there. I, that Yeah. So, yeah, it's like you didn't even make your fucking gun, dude. Like you didn't have to like craft it out of wood or well, you, like you didn't throw a spear at the goddamn thing. And to that you point, just, they didn't even fucking rifle. track it down. So you can't you can't boast about your like, you know, the Native Americans that could follow the like scat and trails and the broken limbs and find their Yeah, you the shot prey. the thing from a Jeep. That somebody <laughs> else drove you to. Like you're yeah. like, here, sit in this Jeep, we'll go f drive you right up to the lion, you shoot it. Good way yeah. to go, white hunter. Like, they have to think we're so <laughs> stupid over there, too. <laughs> this guy actually thought he killed the lion. But anyway, um, so that's kind of where I'm at with the crow. I, I don't know his name. I even tried to look it up, and I don't. I think it's one of those things that they don't ever really tell you. I mean, you can infer that's part of the, the what's neat about it is that crow gear that he's wearing is the same as what Eileen's wearing, or Eileen, yeah. or whatever. And that's the garb that hunters of hunters wear. So yeah. that's... It, it's. That one doesn't bother me that he's such a hard fight because that in this universe so far, that seems to be like that is the top thing other than getting into the supernatural great ones that can just like look at you and kill you. Um, yeah. <laughs> out of all the humans in the world of Bloodborne, hunters of hunters are the baddest of the bad. Um, so, but it's just these three like obstacles. I'm so like, and, and between him and only trying uh martyr legarius once i feel like it, i don't feel like it's impossible i'm not to the point where i'm like fuck this game i'm stuck I can, i'll never get by it but it's like you're at that point where you're like man everything they throw at you is hard <laughs> like <laughs> i have yeah. i've had a pretty easy go of this game so far with the exception of a few things and so now it's kind of really been my first like haha just kidding you're not as good as you think you are yeah totally um i i mean after enough of these games, like, I don't have that feeling anymore. Like, at least if it's, like, a proper, like, Dark Souls game or, uh, in this case, Bloodborne. But, like, I I, I kind of hit that point in Salt and Sanctuary where it's like, I, I can't fucking do this. I can't fucking play this game. Um, I mean, I had, a, I had a few other problems with that game besides it being really tough. But, like, 
I've I've hit my head out the wall enough times that I know eventually it'll break or I'll knock <laughs> myself out. Um, well, it just keeps you, telling, proving to you that it's not an unfair game. It's just a hard game. Like, yeah, it, it it gives you just enough to think like uh, like even when you're like stuck on a fight, it's like. Yeah, but I had him like fucking ten percent health. Well, that's been know? the bitch thing of it to me for this so far. Almost every single major fight that I've gotten to, even including this crow hunter, the first time I came across him, I didn't know, I didn't expect him to be there, of course. And then he like walks up, and I fought him toe to toe, just regular like you would fight any enemy, you know, dodging and trying to parry and stuff. And I didn't have him down to like a sliver of health or anything, but I had him down to like twenty percent health. And so you feel mm. like, yeah, you know, the first time facing this guy and I know what I'm doing. And then frustratingly, it feels like, you know, because I've had bosses like that, that at the first time I face him, I'm like one hit from beating him. Um, and just to humble brag, there's been a few bosses that I have beat the first time that I've come across them. Um, even that Vicar Amelia fight, which I've seen a lot of people be like, oh, that's such a hard fight. Like, I think I was just leveled enough. You just have to out damage it's, her it's, healing, uh, but but also like you realize that because I've heard so many people say, "Oh, that boss fight is hard." Oh, but that boss fight is easy. Where it's just like you realize how much like play style right, right. decides like, and there's something for everyone in terms of like there's going to be bosses you beat the first time and feel like a total badass about, and then there's going to be fights where it's like I I'm stumped. I have no idea if I can you know break this wall down, <laughs> and then like. You realize yes. other people are saying the exact opposite. Uh, right, right. And and so and that's really cool. Um, but I've had a lot of boss fights in Bloodborne uh, so far. Dark Souls as well, um, but more so in Bloodborne, where the first time I fight him, I have him down to, like, the Bloodstar Beast I had down to a couple hits. And then so you're, like, feeling good about yourself, and then it takes you, like, every subsequent time, you don't even fucking get close to that, like, after that. And you're like, wait, what's going on here? Like... I almost feel like they tease you with the first one. Like they weren't ever going to let you beat it on your first attempt, but they were going to make you feel like you were. And then they're like, ha just kidding. Yeah. Um, yeah. That game, that's when they really got like kind of trigger happy on the multi-phase boss fights. Um, and I, and I liked it cause it made the boss fights more interesting. You know, sure. But yeah. It, it, but it also made them a lot more fucking sinister. Uh, and I, th- I would say between, and it, it's funny because it came out first. Between the two, um, the multi-phase in Bloodborne doesn't bother me as much because they tend to be doable still, and they tend to be a progression that makes sense. Like, they don't go from being like, oh, I'm a very slow melee attack to all of a sudden be like, just kidding, the entire stage is going to blow up now. Yeah. Um, Dark Souls 3, on the other hand, seemed to do that a lot, where it's like, okay, I've got this down, and then it hits the stage, and there's never a you you have to play these Soulsborne games to know because it's not like there's a tell like a lot of games where they'll fall to their knees and then the armor will crack off and you're like oh phase two is starting it's just like nope you're at this mm-hmm. magical percentage of health which is almost always either half health or a third health and yeah. if it's a third health you know you're really fucked because you know there's three phases um, yeah but and but the game kind of trains you to like no matter what enemy you're dealing with to kind of expect any sort of offense from them. And it's all because it's like, they're kind of playing by the same rules as you are where it's like, be fucking aggressive. Like, like, you know, it's all about hunting beasts, but everybody is a goddamn animal in this game. Just, yeah. you know, like even you, like, even though you're trying to control the distance, when you go in, you, you go in to like really take a chunk out of them. Uh, so yeah, like there are, there are slow attacks, but like you, you're never surprised when a boss like suddenly like oh he has a fucking flurry attack like you're just like of course he does <laughs> right they, they, and, and of course I died to it because you know it, I'm stupid and it, slow and it's funny because I never thought about it till you just said it. it that is an interesting difference between a lot of the Dark Souls bosses that I remember it was you know wait, both both games it's wait for your opening go in and hit it Dark Souls seemed to be one of the, uh, even three. It's like, here's your opening, and I'll go hit it a couple times and back off, and I felt like I was doing, like, 4% total damage each opening. Bloodborne, yeah. it's just such a faster pace. It's like, when you get your opening, you go in, but you actually feel strong. Like, oh, I can see the amount of damage I did on there. Like, 
Very yeah. few bosses I fought where it's like you're just chipping away at their health. Yeah, where like every time you lose, you're like, oh, you would have been fucked if you hadn't hit me once. Exactly. Because yeah. I, I, mean, I had your ass there, buddy. <laughs> like, you just feel that way because you do a lot of damage. But like, that's that's the puzzle to every boss fight in Bloodborne that is what makes yeah. that game so, so fucking great. But we just spent 20 minutes on it. We spent an hour last week, so Bloodborne. But I just wanted to at least bring up those three parts because that's where I'm at. Um, yeah. Ukulele, I kind of talked about. I beat the second. Well, yeah. there's no. Oh, beating. I can confirm ukulele. You can see your level totals. Good. Um, well, they still suck. Like the second thing, <laughs> you know, you're in trouble when your second world is the snow world because that's always like snow and water and fire. I guess any elemental world in a game, platform game, sucks. But I, I was thinking about that. I was watching a speedrun of it. I was like, I wonder if, like, if they could uh, like. If any platformer developer could just challenge themselves to be like, all right, we're going to make a platforming game and there's not going to be ice and there's not going to be underwater. Right. You know, like, like, what would you do from there? (laughs) You know, because it it just seems like those are such crutches of like, we need variation. So we're going to do the same variation everybody else does. Well, I get tired of like, okay, we're going to throw in a snow stage and the snow is going to be a hamper to you. Like you're just going to slide and walk slow through drifts. It's like, yeah, but then that's just grueling and not fun. What if right. you did a snow stage where it was like, now you're going to get these like bobsled esque segments that are fast and fun? Like, why doesn't it ever work to your advantage? Like, why does it make the level better? Why does it always have to make it worse? I, I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, my bigger gripe is um, when I say beat the level, I beat the boss of stage two, and I can confirm that it is not any better than the boss of stage one. Like, they're, it, they're just frustrating. It wasn't even a really difficult fight. It was just unsatisfying. It's one of these. Have you watched it? If you're watching speedruns, have you seen uh, the stage two boss? When I should clarify, when I watch speedruns of ukulele, I'm like, I'm doing it to fall Other asleep. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not, I'm not paying attention fully to how that game's structured. I will say this: Banjo Kazooie, like the boss fights I do remember from that game weren't fucking good. And yeah. like well, most of the levels, continued that, they've they've nailed that mm-hmm. in in the like, but most of the levels, like you know, in Donkey Kong sixty four, I would argue the same thing. Like they weren't good, but the levels, like in Banjo Kazooie, at least they didn't seem designed that way. So it, it's weird to me that like all these levels have bosses. Yeah, you know, because that's not well, what they were. And announced. even a bad boss fight could be overlooked if the rest of the stage was fun, and they're just not. Um, so that's really all I had to say about ukulele is that I beat the second it, boss. It, it, and it, it's not fun. <laughs> uh, I did. I've only got, I, I bought it. Yeah, I think Monday or it might've been yesterday. Uh, and only got to play it for maybe about an hour, but I did buy what remains of Edith Finch. Uh, I don't know how much you know about that. I, I know I want to play it, um, it, but I, I, it's one of those games where it's like, I'm worried if I look too deep into it, I'm going to get it spoiled yeah <laughs> you so. don't i and i'm i'm not gonna you can't i i thought about like uh i need to get back into streaming and little nightmares comes out Thursday. yeah you mentioned this in either finch and i was going to respond like edith finch is probably not a good idea but like little nightmares might be interesting yeah edith finch like i i, I play i don't want to stream that and i know people probably are but that will completely spoil the game because it's a it's a it's an unabashed walking simulator if we're going to use the the slur term for it yeah. uh, and everybody keeps saying like oh if you've played gone home or um so what's the other one they keep saying they're like if you liked those you'll like this so it's just probably true but a much more apt comparison is the vanishing of ethan carter which i like that's what i was going to say like that's the vibe i get from it yeah. and it's and, like that interests me it, 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 the story is so it, it starts off really kind of grueling and slow um but it does that typical thing. You you arrive at this area, and your character is kind of talking to herself, and you can only walk, and the path is very linear, and so it's like you you have to overcome that hurdle of like this isn't exciting yet. But once it actually gets into it, it's like holy shit! This is just it's different and cool and pretty fucking messed up from what I've gotten to so far. But like in the yeah. most like Stephen Kingy, uh, I don't even like Stephen King. There's better ways to to, but like that mess with your head, Twilight Zoney sort like of way. mental psychological, right? Uh, 
like kind of a psychological horror in some ways. Yeah, but it, and it's and I can't get into it really without spoiling it, so I won't. But and it's it's not even it's horror, but not like monsters after you horror. It's just like yeah. a, a weird, like like in Ethan Carter, the the uh, one of the poignant things in that game that stuck out to me was when you stumble across the UFO in the woods. Yeah. Or the that was, that was a, that's as far as I've gotten in that game so far. Cause and I it, feel sick every time I play it, but, <laughs> but that but was, the, that, that was part. the point in the game that it just blew my mind because up until then, it's just like this gruesome, like murdery, like spooky. You're in the middle of the woods thing. And then all of a sudden you hit that and you're like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> like, yeah, I'm yeah. in space. Like there's more to it than than just supernatural ghosts, um, so I'm I, I like it so far. Now it's still I don't know what it is about these kind of games. It I don't know that it runs choppy. I'd have to see if there's a way to like see what my actual frames per second are. But it gives you that if you're getting that kind of like motion sicknessy out of Ethan Carter, you could probably kind of get it out of this too. Like it just doesn't. I got it out of like Half Life One and Two. Also, it's like it's something about like like some with frame rate and also like the perspective they right. use. And, yeah. and so it's got a little of that where it's like not bad enough where I feel like, Oh, the game is like struggling to run, but it's also not as smooth as I like. It's there's something. And, and you know me, I am not a frames per second, like snob um, right. by any means, but it's enough that it's kind of noticeable. And then it does that thing too, where like you come up to a door and it's like, you know, click the mouse button to grab the door, but then you have to like pull your mouse back to physically open the door and in that specific instance, that's not a huge deal, but that's basically how you interact with everything. So like at one point there's a music box and you have to click and then like circle hmm. your mouse and it's just, I don't, like it. I don't love it. Sort of, yeah, sort of, uh, stretching the, I, the term gameplay. And I kind of wonder if it would feel better with the joystick. Like when I first like fired it up, I had every intention of playing with the gamepad Cause I usually do now if I have the option, but like for whatever, I was like, moving the sticks and stuff and nothing was happening. I'm like, Oh, I must not have gamepad support. I didn't even think to like look first. Cause I was going to play it either way. So I started yeah. with mouse and keyboard and then like halfway through something happened and my gamepad just started vibrating. Like, and I'm like, huh? That, well, that's odd. And so I touched it and like, apparently it was like windows or something hadn't detected my gamepad yet, but it does have gamepad support. So I wonder if that stuff would be any better, but now I'm kind of liking the mouse and keyboard better anyway. Sure. Um, now it's <laughs> kind of indie enough that I didn't see an option to turn off your gamepad. So now as I'm playing my gamepad's just like making the loudest vibrations against my wooden desk. And it's like, well, that's kind of, annoying. that was happening with Stardew Valley. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, I could easily it was freaking me the fuck out. Yeah. Cause you're just, it's quiet night. I'm just you know, like farming shit. But anytime anything happens in that game, you're just on my table. Bah! And my, um, I use a, a knockoff Xbox uh, 360 controller. Um, and so, and I don't know why it, 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 even the GameStop versions had this where, you know, they're USB controllers, even for computer or Xbox. That's the only kind of input they have, but the controller itself has a USB adapter and then like some round port. Like it's just a short little, like two inch adapter to turn it into a USB. I'm like, I don't know what this other port would even fucking be for. But that means it's really easy for me to reach down. If I really got annoyed, I could just unplug the gamepad. But um, you shouldn't have to. A game should give you the option to turn that off. Uh, But it's really cool so far. Um, We'll see how the story holds up because I'm not very far into it at all. Uh, But without spoiling anything either, the first, like everything's broken down into these little vignettes about family members of the, you know, the Finch family, which Mm -hmm. you're one of. And the very first vignette you get to, and it's messed up in the greatest possible way. Um, but it also does some things mechanically that are really cool. A lot of games will throw something in there. Um, this has nothing to do with, with this, but we'll say, uh, I, we talked about it with that dragon cancer where suddenly, you know, it's a kind of a walking sim, but then all of a sudden there'd be a little like mini game where you're the kid and you're like racing a wagon around the halls of the hospital so it's yeah. totally a different kind of control scheme, totally different whatever, and it was sloppy as shit, and that's one of the big knocks on that game for me anyway. This does that kind of stuff where all of a sudden you're in a whole different type of situation, but it controls really well, and it's a really inventive, interesting thing too. Um, so that's really cool, and it's promising. I'm, I'm imagining if they keep playing around with stuff like that that there will be ones that aren't as successful as other ones. 
but um it's it's neat i i, I like it a lot, a lot yeah it looked interesting and i'm i'm glad that i'm glad that people are liking it because it's like i think you know that there's been a lot of you know quote walking simulators that i didn't i didn't particularly enjoy in recent memory you know so like i liked ethan carter when i could play it but you know, like i said it made me yeah, feel nauseous yeah. and if i could and the ones i could play it i like fucking firewatch i hated <laughs> that's that's what's funny too is because you get these people i i like some walking simulators so then everybody's like you're you're a whatever you just automatically you're like a art a artsy fartsy whatever no i think the majority of walking simulators i don't like um yeah. firewatch sounds i didn't play it but from listening to you it sounds like one that i wouldn't particularly love everybody's gone to the rapture i don't know that i would love but i keep wanting to play it just because it looks so gorgeous <laughs> I, I do like i have that on plus, plus. i don't think i've touched I, it yet. yeah and i didn't i didn't my plus was expired when it came out but i think you're right i think it was um gone home i haven't played but i have no interest in that game um yeah not because I, i'm like, like it's no grand social like oh you're a social justice a warrior statement. no it's just yeah. it it doesn't particularly that's what, that's me. my thing is like you know it looks boring to me like once i right once people basically spoiled it for me with that like it's kind of the opposite of edith finch where it's like i'm you know i didn't really care if people spoiled gone home for me and people were more than happy to be like oh it's about this well thanks yeah. and i'm not saying it's not an important well, story and i'm not saying like I said, i'm not against the content itself i'm not against any themes that they're trying to do per se i'm not but it's just, yeah, I don't feel like I, want, it, I have to play. Yeah, it, it doesn't, doesn't me mean it's not a boring fucking game. Right, and mechanically it sounds like, and I could be wrong here, that that game tells a story, you're just walking around like finding notes and reading notes. Um, yeah. And that's just boring. This game is not like that at all, so far. Um, yeah. It, well, it, it's it's kind of, you know, the the walking simulator, you're kind of, you are you are tied at the hip more than probably any other type of game tell your story yeah and 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 story is going to be like unless it's a case of just like terrible writing and stuff and all that happens like stories are already so subjective, subjective right. of like what like the books on my shelf are going to look completely different than the books on yours you know? exactly i mean i could talk about my favorite author probably currently it changes every few years but uh jules verne i love jules verne and a lot of people will be like oh that stuff's just so old it's, it's and, very dumb dry. and dry it's like yeah i get that um i love moby dick and that's like the driest fucking book i mean it's the coolest story i think uh, yeah, i hope that uh, I... as an as an outline <laughs> moby yeah. dick is a great story but i get actually it actually reading you... the novel is it's... very tough right so i mean it things speak to and that this will bring me into the last point i had the big thing this week was that and i don't even know who because I, I don't really want to give it any traffic or attention anyway but the article about like games would be all be better if they didn't have story because games can't tell story and hey i think that's just an obvious inflammatory clickbaity or it, there's one or two options it's either intentionally inflammatory which a lot of places do and i get it it gets you if you did have the whole fucking internet was talking about it all day yesterday um mm. and monday i think when it came out or the person literally has that and they're just such like their head's so far up their ass that they can't see anything outside of their own opinion. Cause I get it. I've, you know, when I'd bring it up there, I about a 50, 50 split on my timeline about people that I actually like their, you know, I, they have good gaming opinions, but personally they either like or don't like games of story because we all play games for different reasons. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, a, I, I miss those days where I had like the confidence that I'm right about everything. So I would always write a long fucking yeah. thing about it. And like those, those were the good old days, but that's the problem because this person might think games and story are bad and pointless, but the rest of us don't, or I can't say all of us, obviously I can't, but, and that was my point. It, it made me sit back and think, uh, I tweeted that the two games I'm currently playing right now, are Bloodborne and NHL 17. Those are the ones I'm playing the most. And, yeah. Yeah, and if you're going <laughs> to tell me Bloodborne doesn't have a good story, then you you didn't do your research. Right. Well. And I get it too, because that's a lot of complaints about from software games from people. It's like, well, you shouldn't have to dig for story. I'm like, well, I like that aspect of it. I yeah. love that I can play a boss, then spend the next four hours watching YouTube videos discussing 
how that particular character fits into this world. Um, if they yeah. do theory on it, I love that, but I get it if you don't. Yeah, yeah, like you know, would Bloodborne be better if you had a fucking companion doing cheesy one-liners and <laughs> you know, hold on to your butts? And when you or if there was literally no story, shit. they didn't give you any like, and that's what a lot of people think that there's no story. It's like, no, it's there. You just, it's yeah, not going to spoon feed it to you, you through dialogue scenes. Yeah, I don't want every game to tell their story like Bloodborne, but I think that is a totally valid way to tell the story. Because on the flip side, you got ukulele that stops you at every chance it fucking gets to give you a like 10 minute exposition on jumping on a platform that was, that was another thing that surprised me watching speedruns of it like how long the fucking intro is it's just like the, the lizard the bat and go collect shit yeah uh, and then and you can't speed up or skip the dialogue it's uh, uh but anyway yeah. Yeah. so uh, but um and then what were the the, the other examples uh Oh, I said the, the two games on my Steam, if I, if I organize my Steam's list by hours played, the top two games right now are Witcher 3 and Rocket League. So again, it's like one is pretty much... And I was joking with you yesterday when we were talking about it, but Witcher 3 mechanically is pretty sloppy. <laughs> it's rough. Not yeah. a lot of games could could end up in our Game of the Year discussion with that kind It, it of, was the story. Right. Like for the, me entirely. 100%. He, um, and then Rocket League, obviously, I did not play 400 hours. And I think I was like 280 hours of Rocket League. It obviously was not I, because of story. There I, checked is my, I checked my hours played. My top game was Metal Gear Solid Five, mm. and which I was into the story until they fucking kind it's of just, shot the bed at the end. But yeah, like, and, and it, but, but once again, you know, it's like, you know, that would that game be better without that story? No. Like, cause then that's just, you know, hours of stealth missions that are not connected to anything. Um, you know, and there wouldn't be that weird fucking Kojima shit. So you know, like, I don't even know like where to begin with. So this was something that's stupid. Like yeah. it's yeah, okay. Well, then we'll go, we'll, we'll all, fuck it. We'll all go back to Pong. Every game will just be a fucking complex I, version from of Pong. What I gathered, the, the crux of the argument was games can't tell a story as well as a movie or a book can. It's like, no, it tells it differently as well as subjective. They it, have it, to it, tell it differently the, because what the fuck does that mean? You, anyway? Cause it's like, you act like you've never seen a bad movie or read a bad well, book. How about you know, this? A song can't tell a story as well as a movie can because it's only five to eight minutes long, typically. So should songs never, ever have any kind of storyline to them? I, I would even take issue with that because then you're saying, well, st- like poems can't tell stories. Right. Like that's what the they, fuck are you talking they about? They all tell of different. They yeah, they all tell different kinds of stories. Right. And the, I agree. A game can't tell the story like a movie can because... Do you really want to go to the theater and watch an eighty-hour movie? <laughs> and that's the crit. And that is such a common criticism that you can't act like it's something that, as like gamers, we're ignorant about. How many times do we read like this game's trying too hard to be a movie? Just right. go fucking tell a movie story, like it's or or vice versa. Like it's yeah. The movies I mean, are like oh, we're gonna capture the spirit of the game, like that fucking Doom movie. It's like. You, that was, I mean, that was terrible for many reasons, but that didn't help. You know, it, it, like you said, it's different types of stories. That's one of the stupidest, like, like it's like, oh, Roger Ebert's no longer with us, so we need a curmudgeon to right. tell us about fucking art and how well, art should be. A fast food place can't possibly deliver the same kind of food as a five-star restaurant, so we just shouldn't have fast food places. It's like, well, they all do, they're doing different things. Um and I, I, if it comes down to it where you're like you're playing all these games you're like oh these are horrible because i don't like how they're telling the story it's like well maybe you're just not into video games that's fine too not yeah, everybody maybe, is you know i have huge i'm like i'm basically in one of those spells now where it's like i don't want to play something with a story and we have to like invest in one i just want to play shit that's like pretty light and you know kind of competitive and like Darkest Dungeon. <laughs> right, well, I mean, I, I've i only played like 90 know, minutes yeah, of that or yeah. something. Um, but, like, you know, Shovel Knight is not like this intense thing. It's, it's you know, I, I like the story they're telling in this new DLC, but it's very light. Which know? is, and it's funny because that's why I, I, 
I, I know you're not out buying a bunch of stuff right now anyway, but that's kind of one of the things that's more disappointing to me because I, I, I knew you were kind of in that spot with games. And I was, it's, it'd be really cool to be like, well, ukulele is right. That's the perfect game for you because that's what it should be. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah, apparently well, not. But I, I mean, well, I mean, I'll I'll play that at some point. That's on my wish list. I wish I could I like don't. give it to you, like off my be like, take it off mine <laughs> and just give it to. You know what? I didn't like this. <laughs> ben, you play. Like, it. I get that I've played too long to That's get a refund on it, it, but can I? That's give the it problem to... with that digital future. Yeah. You can't send your games to friends, but uh, like honestly, the game that kind of intrigues me the most right now is I think it just came out, uh, the Sexy Brutale. <gasps> I see that's one that I bought. I was buying some other stuff and I just kind of threw it. It's in there. So I have, that's the one that I'll probably stream. Um, but I haven't, like I just, it. I just watched the quick look of it today and like mechanically, I like a lot of the stuff they're doing. Like they're doing a kind of a time rewind, like Majora's mass almost sort of thing. Like where you, like you watch a guy, uh, watch somebody die and like you have to you have to constantly follow the participants around without being noticed um and sort of piece together like how the murder yeah. happens and it's like you a can murder mystery like it. a dinner theater thing almost um yeah but it's like, it's like esque like it, yeah it's but it's like cartoonishly styled and it, like the style is so good yeah, and yeah. the music is amazing like i love the like it's like really kind of like like it fits the tone of the game, but it's like kind of like jaunty, like that kind of uh, like you like you masquerade. Yeah, because that's kind of the setting it's set in. Well, not kind yeah. of it is the setting it's set in, but uh, yeah, like masquerade mystery. I'll tell you, that's like that. that's really a game that somehow completely avoided my attention until it came out, and it's one of those games like this. You're like, what the hell is that? And especially with I, a name like that. It. I didn't know anything about it until you mentioned it on Twitter, I think. And then, yeah, like, and then you're like, well, hey, you see a name like that, you're like, well, I need to figure out what the hell this is because the sexy yeah, brutal. What that, the hell kind of name suit, is that? Yeah, suit of suit of fifty one. Like, <laughs> uh, and then you I, pull, I, you look it up, and like the second you see it, you're like, holy crap, this is like its own. Like it, that's what I loved. That's what got me right away. I was like, this is doing its own thing. It's not, and it's such yeah. a cool idea too. I mean, it's. There's a lot of games that do its own thing, but its own thing is stupid. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I would say, like, you know, if you if you listen to this and you don't know anything about the game, watch the Giant Bomb Quick Look, because mm -hmm. that's what kind of sold me on it. Like, I saw it when you mentioned it, I looked it up, and I was like, oh, that seems kind of neat. But now, like, after watching it in action and realizing that it's really... Like, when you tell me, like, there's time travel stuff like that, and you gotta, like, figure out schedules of characters and shit, like, that just sounds like work. And it was part of the problem I had with Majora's Mask is like you spend a lot of time in that game fucking having to learn people's goddamn routines. And like you can't just go to a place and get a thing from a guy because, oh, he's not there anymore. Um, this is all wrapped around that in a way that's really kind of cohesive. Like it's, it's really just a way to set up a puzzle for the player where it's like, yeah, like they're on they're on a routine, but the puzzle is like trying to figure out how you interrupt that routine. Right. You know, what, what in this room can help you stop what fucking the killer is doing in the next room? Um, and all the while, great music's playing. Like I, <laughs> like, like I, I tweeted about it today, and like the developer liked my tweet because it was just like, yeah, all that stuff looks cool, but the music, man, yeah. it's, I love the music. Um, so yeah, I think that's, that's probably the highest priority for me right now is I really want to play that, but there's a lot of shit out there, a lot of smaller stuff now. It's like, we kind of got through like the big releases and now we're in this weird window where it's like every game, like every game I want is $20. The problem is that there's like eight of them. Yeah, well, and that's the thing too is all these games, Edith Finch, Little Monsters. I already bought Little. When I bought Edith, I was like, I might as well pre-purchase because I know I'm going to get Little Monsters. I've been obsessed oh, with that since they announced it. Or Nightmares, yeah. Um, I get confused because when they announced it, it was called Hunger, um, <laughs> and it was only within like the last year that they. And I'm glad that they changed that because I talked about it before. It was a fucking nightmare trying to Google Hunger the game. <laughs> yeah. For some reason, there there's something else out there with those words in it that is extremely popular. Um, it turns out, <laughs> yes. But uh, so th that's ready to you know download as soon as it comes out. I think it's tomorrow. It might be Friday, but uh, 
Yeah. Um, but anyway, so a lot of cool things, but they're all 20 bucks, but it's one of those things where they're smaller games, but they feel like they're worth $20. Like I'm yeah, not unhappy like a, paying it. Yeah, it's just like, I'm not knocking the price of any of these games. Like they're all reasonable. It's just, I don't have the yeah. money. Like and, I talked about it on yesterday. My, like my fucking bank account, it's gotten to the point where <laughs> my like account's so low that my bank is taking, taking my money. money. Yeah. Which because I think is the most counselor. ridiculous thing. They're like, you don't have yeah. enough money, so we're going to take money from you. It's like, well, yeah, and that's, that's going like, to leave me with less money. That is how fucking banks do it, I guess. And I was just like, can I like, can we just go back to like, I'll just bury my money in my yard because yeah. like I can't fucking trust you. People. You're taking my money for no reason. Yep. <laughs> but that was like, yeah, it was like we didn't. Well, we don't want you to overdraft your account. Well, how will taking money my, away from me help me? me? Yeah. Then let me keep my fucking five bucks, and then I'm like, that's five more bucks that I can guarantee I won't go under. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't. I was just complaining. I talked about it on the show when it happened, but I, my bank recently that my mortgage is through, where I pulled it up to pay my mortgage like a week in advance, and it's like you're a month behind. It's like, um, no. And I called yeah. them up, and they're like, yeah, you didn't pay last month's mortgage, but there's more than enough money sitting in this unapplied funds. If you want to use that, it's like, why the fuck is it in unapplied funds? Like, I literally paid the mortgage, and instead of applying it to the Stop mortgage, they applied it to nothing. Now. Because unapplied yeah. funds is literally nothing. They're like, well, there's money sitting here, but where did you want to put it towards it? It's like, yes. Oh, did, you, oh, did you want us to, did, did you want the money to go to the thing that we're charging <laughs> yeah. you for right now? It's, it's, it's like, we weren't sure if we wanted to just take the money out of your main account and apply it to nothing or if you wanted to take the money out of the main account and apply it to the bill that was due so we we had decided probably out of the two you wanted it applied to nothing because they took my money away i i don't use that bank for my main banking so it's like i lost you know that money's gone out of my checking account but it's just sitting there in limbo but and then they're get they get nasty you're behind on your it's like no and no, because you fucking put my shit in a sock drawer instead <laughs> right. of like used it to pay the bill. I gave it to you to it's pay. Like, oh, oh, did you want us to use that? We we went to lunch and like yeah, oh shit, bought rounds for everybody at the bar. We didn't know that you wanted to, and uh, you know, and once they fixed it, I didn't get any like hit on my credit or any late fees or anything. But it's like it was such a head scratching conversation. Uh, banks like, are fucking weird. More That's why I love those. I hate them because I play them every commercial break with those commercials with a guy at like generic bank. That's such like a slimy douchebag. Yeah. And then they're like, well, at Huntington, we don't do that. It's like, yeah, you do. You do different stuff. Yeah. You're, <laughs> you're, you're all, you're all fucking bad. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I, that was, that was really a lot of people. I think growing up, they kind of, like there are certain things that are just like these moments of passage into adulthood that everybody gets excited for. Oh, I have my own bank account. So it's like, I was never looking forward to that because it was just like, even as a kid, I was like, what, what do you people even do? Like <laughs> you just, you, I can hold on to my money. Like you, you find ways to like take it out of my account without me like getting to use it on things that I already want. Like they invent reasons. It's like right. a monthly maintenance fee. <laughs> right. Like if, why do I lose nine bucks a month unless I unless once again, unless I'm already like well off and I got plenty of money, like why do I lose nine bucks a month? Because what's there to maintenance? If you can fit all my money in my bank account in like a single envelope, <laughs> then like there's nothing to maintain. Yeah. Like if, if they can hand you a if you say, I want to clear my account, they can hand it to you without giving you a briefcase and a handcuff. Like, you're like, good. Like do, you, like, do you realize how fucked up that is? They're taking nine bucks a month out of my account and then taking five bucks out of my account when I'm too low because they keep taking nine bucks out of my account. Yeah. <laughs> and if you let that go, eventually they'll say, now you're overdrafted and you owe us $40 or $50 compounded daily. It's like, yeah, wait, and you wait. just and you just get to a point like, fuck it, just you know, we're, we're gonna hit negative ten thousand apparently, because <laughs> um, yeah, you I, keep taking nine bucks out. I don't, I don't understand it. But on the flip side, I know you joke about, oh, bury it in your yard. I, I live in an area where a lot of people don't have bank accounts because they either don't trust them or their credit and stuff has been so bad that they literally can't 
like I didn't Both know it was very possible good reasons to, to yeah. not have a bank account. But what that turns into is then you always hear this like, oh, car got broken into in the like thirteen hundred block of Eighth Street. Three CDs were stolen and twenty five hundred dollars in cash. It's Do like, not put that shit in your car. Well, no. That, and to be fair, most of that's a lie because people they're they're hoping their insurance will hand them twenty five hundred dollars. Shockingly, as somebody that works in insurance, that's not covered because everybody lies about it. Right. <laughs> But that but means like, if your money does get stolen, you're fucked. It's just gone. Like, sure, but that, but you know, people act like, oh, Ben, you 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 just love pirates. So there's no reason for it. Pirates knew how to hide money. Mm-hmm. You know, so you got to be elaborate about that shit. It's got to be a map, and the map can and the map has to be like there has to be three maps, and two of them have to be lies. And, you have and they to have to be in map. like units of measurement that only you know. Yeah, like Nathan Drake shouldn't be able to find your fucking money. Yeah, screw Nathan. You know, and that's you know, play Uncharted Four, and you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. Like but, that guy just barely didn't hide his money good enough because <laughs> Drake found it. Well, what you do is like you I, now I want to make a treasure map that says like, oh, take forty pacers to the for, uh, to north, and what a pa- pacer is is not like a misspelling of pace. It's add up the height of everybody on the Pacers roster. And that's a unit. That's a Pacer. Like, wow. That's, yeah. a, that's tough. Um, and no, but maybe like you need something that like, you need to put the money somewhere where you will forget about it. Um, but like the moment you see a map, you, it'll, it'll trigger, trigger your memory, but the map won't actually tell you where it is. It'll just trigger your memory. Like that way you're a step ahead yeah, of everything. Yeah. Now um, I'm thinking my goal in life, we've got like two minutes before I want to wrap the show up anyway, is to yeah. get wealthy and not like not necessarily be a billionaire, although I won't turn that down if anybody you know out there has money yeah, and they yeah, want to give they, it to they, me. Yeah. But just to be that. wealthy enough that I can leave behind an intricate series of treasure maps that lead to nothing, but it's plausible like you get enough people out there that would spend their entire lives looking for the Gibson fortune. Like it's yeah. got to be plausible. If someone like me passed away and I left a treasure map, they'd be like, that asshole didn't have anything. So you, you need to get yourself to a station in life where they could believe that you had even just like a million dollars. Because people would dedicate their life for a million dollars. Yeah, if I could like convince some naive fucking Indiana Jones wannabe out there that I had a fortune or some shit hidden away, that would be a life well lived to me so there's only two steps to have enough money that is plausible and to make sure that enough locals in a small town see you heading off into the desert with a shovel that, that's the thing like you either have to be rich here or you got to be normal in a like poor country <laughs> and you, you have to be like in a really like kind of mysterious way like you're very you're very short with the locals like you don't get to know anybody as like no he just lives up on that mountain you know, and but then like people was like, I heard he has a fuck ton of gold. Let's kill him. Yeah. It, it, well, it, I think it'd be worth getting killed if I knew whoever killed me is going to waste the rest of their life looking for a treasure that doesn't exist. Because you know those people, they they go to the bankruptcy and they die of starvation because they've spent everything that they have in the hopes of finding. You know. Yeah, I, I like yeah. it. That's yeah. That's my I new. I, that's my one of my new life goals. I think we can come together on that. Uh, and we can call that a show. So we'll we'll get to work on that on leaving our false legacies. Um, that's that's the name of the show. <laughs> false uh, legacy that would it's coming to coming to the Discovery Channel. Yeah, like I said, I really wish that I could like go back in time and pick the the stream title after we talk because there's always a phrase like that that comes up that I'm like, damn, damn. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, thanks yeah. for thanks for joining us. Thanks for. Thanks for letting us into your ear holes for a while. Yep. Forage around in there for longer than we deserve to be there. Yeah. Goodbye. So, see you later.